Well, hey, Kimmy, thanks for joining me for another episode of the Full Frontal Living podcast. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that I'm pretty passionate about uh, because this is something that I've experienced in my life. Uh, I know many people who do this, no shade throwing, but I do know many people who do this. And I say that because they don't even know that they're doing it. And we're talking about emotional bypassing. So I am recording this on October the 11th. And unless you are living under a rock, you know that there's some pretty horrible things going on in the world right now. And although I'm not going to dive into it, what I can say and what I, what I talked about on my Instagram was it's okay to not be feeling okay. It's okay to be in this place of feeling if you're anything like me, this depth of sadness and heaviness, um, and, and deep grief and sorrow, um, as somebody who is a deep feeler, and I'm going to get into how that wasn't always the case, but it was, um, this has been a hard, this has been a hard time. It's been hard to navigate this. And I often can get into my head. So I try and get out of my body and into my head. And I'm always telling you guys to get out of your head and into your body, trying to think my way away from the pain that I'm feeling because the belief is if I can just understand it, if I can just wrap my brain around this, then maybe it won't hurt so badly. And I will never, ever understand violence. I will never understand hatred. I will never understand cruelty. And there have been many days where I feel like I'm, I've been losing my faith in humanity and this is why coming home to the foundational pieces that I teach around emotional resiliency, what it really means to be resilient, and I'll post a link to a previous podcast episode I did on that, is so important because as somebody who is quite sensitive to the energies around her, it is so important for me to make sure that I am doubling down on the things to support my emotional well-being right now. Otherwise, I can just drown in all of this, and you might be relating to what I'm saying. So this brings us back to the topic though of emotional bypassing. So what really inspired this episode was a post from the uh, holistic psychologist, and I'll put her link down below. She is such a wealth of information. And so often she's able to say things and articulate things in a way that like I, some people are just really great at putting words together. Sometimes I think I am. And sometimes I think that I go around in circles a lot to get my point across. I'm not trying to judge myself here. This is just something that I have noticed, but she had made a post about uh, this emotional bypassing and uh, it is, it is common. It is common coping mechanism. Now, maybe you can relate. These are the people who are in this place of chronic positivity. So I've talked about it on previous episodes as using gratitude as a way of bypassing what we're feeling. So gratitude is a really powerful tool to help us shift from how we're feeling into a more positive place. But there is a difference between those of us who are willing to be present and feel. So over the past couple of days, I've been really present to all the emotions I've been feeling, as I just named, and then also being able to say, you know, Lisa, like this, this deep sense of gratitude for my life, because I am very, very aware that I have massive, um, you know, cute white blonde girl privilege here. I'm not. I, I'm not in denial of that, how fortunate I am to have my life, but to just flip into gratitude without first acknowledging what I'm feeling would be bypassing my emotions. So why do people do this? Why are there so many people who want to live in this bubble of love and light and what we call, you know, chronic positivity and it is a form, as I said, of disassociation, meaning that they are so out of touch with how to feel uncomfortable feelings 
it's easier to justify going into gratitude and positivity because holding that space for uncomfortable emotions is damn near impossible for them. So in my past life, and I've told this story, I didn't even let people hug me because if you hugged me, I might feel something. Now, I didn't realize that that was going on for me at the time, but I grew up as a, you know, I would say a highly sensitive kid, but because I grew up in a family where I think there was a lot of disassociation from feelings, and maybe this is uh, relatable for you, most of us grew up in families where we weren't taught emotional uh, fluency, we didn't discuss our feelings, our feelings weren't um, acknowledged, let alone validated. So whatever you were feeling, it's like you started to question whether or not that was okay, because if it was just dismissed anyways, what happens is you just start to question yourself. And this happens with people who are in this place of chronic positivity. When you're around them all the time, you can start to question whether or not what you're feeling is valid, or are you too deep of a feeler? Or are you too much or, or whatever? And this can create real problems in relationships because people who do flip into this kind of chronic positivity, they are very good at justifying why they should be in that place of light and love and positivity, because who doesn't want to be there? And like I said, they're completely unaware of the fact that what is really going on for them is their inability to sit in the heavy, dark, hard feelings, the feelings on the, you know, kind of negative end of the emotional spectrum, if that's what you want to call them. And again, I don't want to make these people wrong or bad. I certainly don't want to fit, uh, sit in shitty emotions all day long. But part of being resilient is being able to be with those emotions and then take responsibility for what it is you need to feel better, whether it's gratitude, whether it's going for a walk, having a bath, whatever your strategies are. And again, I'll link that episode, but it's, it's being able to hold space for both. And this is what makes us healthy humans, because the reality is, is if you are constantly stuffing down the feelings that you don't want to feel, it will create uh, problems in your life dis-ease equals, right, disease. It's this feeling of unease inside of us because I don't know how anybody could stuff down emotions right now about what's going on in the world. But a lot of people will because they literally can't handle it. So what this looks like um, when you're when you're with somebody who is kind of disassociated from themselves in this way and they're in this place of chronic positivity, these are the things that you're going to notice and I just want you to be aware of this, right? We want to have compassion for these people because they don't know what they don't know. You might be listening, thinking, holy shit, this is me. Like I do this all the time. So let's approach this with curiosity, kindness, and compassion for ourselves and for others. Like I said, I have been this person. So we start telling other people how they should feel. Well, why do you feel that way? Like, why can't you just be grateful for the life you have? Like, it's not your life. Um, they might be telling you like, you should just be happy. Like, look at what's going on in your world. So again, they start telling you how you should feel, which then will make you question if what you are even feeling is valid. They ignore negative emotions. I just talked about that. So they, they just cannot be with, and maybe this is you, you can't be with feeling bad or the depth of sadness because I get it. It is hard to hold that. It is, it is hard to hold that they go into denial. So they often use denial, like pretending like it's not happening, downplaying it. Um, yeah, we've all, we've all used denial at one point at, in time in our lives. So I'm sure I don't need to explain that. And these are all again, points that, um, I took right from the holistic psychologist. I just wanted to pull them apart a little bit more and put some more context around them. They block out things that make them uncomfortable. So there's a nuance to this, right? So if you are constantly just like, I talk about this as a way to preserve your emotional well-being, right? Really cultivating the, the spaces that you're in. So the people that you're surrounded by, um, the friends that you're surrounded by, what is on your Instagram feed, uh, what is in your Facebook feed, right? Like where you're spending your time and your energy because only you can be responsible for that. So there's this fine line of, Pay attention, but not too much attention, because if you are just pushing everything out because you don't want to deal with it, that again is, is bypassing the things you don't want to feel. So I have 
educated myself. I have had conversations that I need to have. I have seen enough. I have seen enough. Watching any more and feeling any more deeply than I already do isn't going to save anybody else from their sadness. And I was just talking to my uh, therapist about this this morning, how there was a point of in time in my life where I literally felt like I couldn't turn things off because if I did, how dare I, how dare I turn things off when other people were suffering so greatly? And the underlying belief was, well, if I, if I'm feeling this with them, then maybe they won't feel it as, as hard. Maybe they won't suffer as much. And there's nothing true about that. So there comes this line where you need to know when you need to step back because it's really impacting your emotional well-being. That's not bypassing, right? So again, it's the chronic, like just shutting out everything in life, like la la la, nothing bad is happening in the world versus knowing what's going on in the world and then being very conscious about how you're cultivating your feed and the information coming in. I don't wanna see any more photos. I don't, I don't need to see any more photos. So I'm not blocking it out. I'm very much acknowledging how I'm feeling. I'm being with it and I'm being responsible for my own emotional and, and, um, mental being. Okay. The other thing you're going to see from people who are truly disassociated, and this is where they sound, you know, it can almost sound cruel and cold. And I, I remember having this done to me quite often within my family, um, as many of us did, because I'm a Gen Xer and it was just a different re uh, generation. So not to throw shade on my parents, but, you know, every generation can do a little better. I think we know that, right? Like the Gen Xers, we were kind of left to fend for ourselves. Um, but they tell you to just get over it. Like you should be able to just get over it. And for those of us who are feelers, that's very, very dismissive. And it can be very confronting because we're not meant to just get over things. We're meant to feel things. Um, and especially if you are anything like me, I'm a very kinesthetic person, which means I actually process the world through my emotions. There's upsides and downsides to this. Sometimes I wish I was more of a visual processor or, or an auditorial processor um, because, you know, I have to make sure that I don't lose myself in my emotions, but um, you know, we don't want to stay in it. I don't want to, I don't want to stay in it. I have to be able to feel it and then take responsibility for what I need to do to support myself feeling better. Okay. So People who are disassociating from their emotions and in this place of chronic positivity, a lot of it really comes from wanting to avoid, right? Again, avoid what they're feeling. They don't have any tools, so they don't know how to feel what they're feeling. And I find many of my clients who come to me, they really struggle with tuning into their emotions because they were taught to repress them because again, they weren't validated. They weren't acknowledged. Uh, they questioned them at a young age. So they just learned to shove it down because nobody was going to make them feel better. And as you probably heard me say in previous episodes, trauma, this was explained to me by my uh, trauma therapist was trauma. Isn't always these big things like a car accident or being physically assaulted. Trauma can be the things that you didn't get. And for many of us, when we were young and we were feeling things, we didn't get the love and support and belonging or the feeling of safety that we needed. And that created little T trauma for us. So we learned to repress our feelings because nobody was going to help us. Okay. So these type of people who are really emotionally bypassing and trying to deny reality, what they're really trying to do is avoid any type of conflict. They don't want to feel anything that is going to create any anxiety or discomfort in them. So they will avoid at all costs, right? This is why we just go to being positive. They're incredibly frustrating people to have a conversation with about anything serious because they can't get there. Um, they often look really, really great on the outside. So they don't want to talk about things. They're often shut down. So they look like everything is fine and they're put together and they're happy and positive people, but they're actually really stuck in a lot of shutting down and numbing activities. So it might be, you know, constantly overdoing, so very um, committed to their career, being busy all the time, um, 
you know, oftentimes with my clients, they have a, a complicated relationship with food and their bodies, right? So there's numbing out going on there. Uh, maybe excessive time on social media, shopping, like it shows up in their lives as ways that they are avoiding, whether it's through certain behaviors or, you know, that glass of wine every single night. And maybe the wine drinking is going up as things are going on in the world. Um, as I said, they invalidate others. So they're very dismissive of what other people are feeling. And often they're like, oh, I can't be, I can't be in that person's energy. I can't be in that person's energy. They're bringing down my vibe. Oh my fucking God. Like, again, we want to be in this place of feeling good. We are responsible for feeling good. But if you are bypassing feelings, you don't want to feel, but telling yourself you're high vibe, you're actually not. You think you're high vibe, but you cannot feel high vibe if you cannot hold the space for low vibe. You can't. So you actually are in this place of what I call the beige middle ground, where you're not really feeling what you could feel. You're not really expanding into what you can expand into because you, you can't do that unless you're willing to be at both ends of the spectrum. So, you know, I've had the privilege this year, if you're watching on video, you probably saw the eye roll there. Uh, I've had the privilege this year of experiencing like such grief like grief that took me to my knees, grief that made me want to not get out of bed, grief that had me curled up in the fetal position, wailing. And let me tell you, to experience that was something else. And to be able to know that I was going to be okay, even in the depth of that pain, has propelled me so much into what I'm also able to hold on the other end of the spectrum, which is this immense joy and peace and fulfillment, um, you know, bliss states that's going to be available to me as well. So, you know, I know that nobody gets out of bed in the morning and says, wow, I hope that today I learn how to feel my feelings, but I'm telling you, once you learn how to master and be with your emotions, you will master your life because they are here to help you, to guide you, to direct you, to show you your humanity. We are here not to be cyborgs. We are here to experience life in the fullest. And that's why we have these emotions, even though so many of us are afraid of them. So remember, you know, your feelings aren't facts. <laughs> your feelings aren't facts. They're here like waves on the ocean. They need to roll in and roll out. But we can expand our capacity to hold that space for discomfort. And we need to be able to do that in a world that is so filled with polarity right now. We need to be able to navigate the width and the depth of our emotion. Um, so I said they, they invalidate others. They're very dismissive of other people's feelings. And they want to avoid right? They're trying to keep themselves safe in this avoidance pattern because it is just too hard to be with those uncomfortable uh, emotions. It literally feels like their love, safety, and belonging is going to be threatened if they start to feel things. It feels very out of control. So these people are often, um, they, they can very much get into perfectionism and almost like bordering on the ones that are controlling all the things, right? They believe that they are literally like controlling their world. So um, them probably like you and probably like me, you know, I don't love conflict either. Who loves conflict? Who wakes up and says, yeah, I hope I get to deal with conflict today. But most of us didn't even grow up learning conflict revel. <laughs> resolution. We didn't grow up learning how to communicate. And as I've already said, we certainly didn't grow up, at least my generation, learning how to talk about our emotions or feeling our feelings or anything like that. That was just not the environment. Our parents didn't know how to do it. So how could they possibly teach us how to do it? So we can do better for um, generations moving forward, but we don't, we weren't taught boundaries even. So People who are bypassing their emotions, they don't have the skill set. Most of us don't have the skill set. I've had to learn it, right? I was this person who bypassed emotions. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Uh, in fact, the last time my life blew up, I didn't tell anybody. 
I was like a solo show other than when I went to my therapy, I didn't let anybody in or anybody know because I didn't even know how to feel what I was feeling. So the bottom line is, as with all my episodes, I am here to not just inspire you, but to educate you, to give you another perspective, to hopefully allow you to see parts of yourself that you may not even be aware are there. So as I said, in this episode, I may be describing you. You might be thinking, God, that was my childhood. Yeah. Like when I think back, all my emotions were denied. Yeah. We didn't have conflict in our house. Like everybody avoided any conflict or confrontation. You know, in my house, it was like, talk to the hand because I said so, right? Like there was no talking about feelings. So we have learned and many of us have adopted, you know, the um, online kind of self-development culture that we have now, which is telling us to keep our vibe high and to be positive and think positive and be that person that is always positive. So when we are this person that is disassociating from our feelings, we have all the justification as to why, why would I want to be a little vibe? Why would I want to feel this? Why would I want to spend energy on this? This is going to take me out of alignment. We have all the reasons to justify why this is okay. And I am here to open a window and thanks to the uh, holistic psychologist for bringing up this topic topic to illuminate you and allow you to see this new perspective of like, holy shit, maybe I am doing this. And what would it be like for me to not be positive all the time? Am I willing to be with these emotions? And even if you're the person you're like, no, Lisa, I'm not ready to feel this. I want to be positive. Can you at least be curious about how often you are dismissing other people's emotions or telling them to get over it or judging people for how they feel and perhaps trying to make them wrong or telling them how they should feel, which is even worse. Let's just use this episode as an eye opener again, to be curious about how am I showing up in the world? How are you showing up in the world? And what would be possible if you just took a couple minutes every day to check in with yourself and instead of being positive, asking yourself, how am I really feeling in this moment? What am I really experiencing from what is going on in the world? What am I struggling to be with? Because I, I will tell you, you know, at six o'clock this morning, I was already in tears after an, a night of nightmares. <laughs> which was not awesome. Uh, you know, my heart is really breaking for the world. So I'm willing to stay present to that. And as I said, also come home to, can I move into something that is going to support me feeling better? So using gratitude as a tool, but not as a way to bypass what I'm struggling to be with. So I am sending you so much love. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Um, emotions are such a challenging thing to talk about because so many of us are just, we just, like I said, we don't have that education or the fluency around it. And we are fearful. We are fearful of tuning into our emotions, being with them. We are so fearful of being uncomfortable and exploring corners of ourselves that, um, you know, we're, we're unaware of. And I'll, I'll share this and then I'll end the episode. Otherwise it'll be five more minutes and five more minutes. But I mean, I remember when Macy first went to rehab my hubby and I was so terrified that if I started to cry that I would never stop. So I was like, I had like bent the hose, right? Kink the hose. Like, I'm not going to feel this. I'm going to be strong. And in doing so, I was creating so much internal conflict. And that's why all these 
unhealthy codependent coping behaviors were coming out in my life, which was creating like a disaster in my life. No different than an alcoholic, right? Like these behavior patterns we get into are so destructive in our lives. And once I learned to befriend my emotions, once I learned that they weren't here to punish me or make me feel bad, that I, yes, I would feel bad, but nothing bad would happen because I felt bad, that I actually was strong enough to be present to grief, to sadness, to anger, to vengeance, <laughs> to frustration, to overwhelm. But that that was also, like I said, going to expand my capacity for, for joy and fulfillment and peace and ease that I was going to welcome all of that in because you can't just pick and choose the emotions you're going to welcome in. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. That is when you start repressing. Okay. So on that note, take good care of you, especially now. You know, if you need to unplug, unplug. You don't need to be plugged in to be mindful of how you're feeling about all of this. You are responsible for your emotional well being. And I really encourage you to find ways to move that emotion, whether it's getting out and moving, whether it's writing in your journal, whether it's having a conversation with a, a close friend who, who, is emotionally available to hold space for that conversation, who isn't a toxic positivity person who's going to make you feel like you're crazy pants. But give yourself the things that you need to give yourself in order to come back to a place of peace without bypassing and pushing things down. Okay. That is truly what it means to be resilient. So I will link that episode in the show notes. If you haven't listened to it yet, go back and listen to it. I will link the holistic psychologist who I adore. Thank you so much. There's my phone ringing. So much love to you. And I will catch you on the next episode.